Welcome to Health Styles. I'm Connie Mead. Over the last decade or so, we've all seen progress being made in the fight against breast cancer. Due to ongoing research, research physician, physicians have an even greater understanding of critical risk factors, the importance of early detection, and the best methods of treatment. Well, today we will take a look at the detection piece of all this. And we focus on that because if breast cancer is found in the earliest stages, it is most curable. So today we look at a new uh, mammography method or a new mammography tool, uh, 3D mammography, and we learn where we can access this in our own area. Joining me for our discussion today is Dr. Jill Steinkeller a radiologist and the director of breast imaging at Lowell General Hospital. Dr. Steinkeller graduated from Tufts Medical School and uh, did her residency at Brown University Rhode Island Hospital and also completed a fellowship at Brigham and Women's Hospital in women's imaging. So Don Dr. Steinkeller, I want to welcome you to the program. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be here. Okay, well it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, so anyway, uh, we want to talk about the importance of early detection for breast cancer and um, you know ways to do that. But first, I want to just talk about what breast cancer is and kind of get us all on the same page with an understanding of breast cancer. Sure. Um, so breast cancer is a common type of breast cancer that we see in women. It actually affects one in eight women over their lifetime. So each woman has a 12.5% risk of developing breast cancer. Um, breast cancer is a type of malignancy, so a cancer that develops in the breast tissue itself, mm -hmm. typically either in um, the lobules of the breast tissue or within the ductal system of the breast tissue. So what happens is cancer cells proliferate out of control, mm -hmm. and our goal with imaging is to detect those cancers when they're very small, when they're treatable mm -hmm. and curable. Okay, so before it's had a chance to spread in a way that threatens the whole entire body. That's correct. Our goal with imaging is to find breast cancers when they're very early, before mm -hmm. they're clinically evident, and before they've spread to other parts of the body, like lymph nodes or distant sites. Okay, so now you say that women have a one in eight chance of developing this over the course of their lifetime. So is that number increasing in terms of the, um, you know, in terms of demographics, a general picture, are more people have, getting breast cancer? Is, is that number increasing? Um, that number has been steady for a while, although the incidence has increased over time. Okay, so I'm not sure if it's steady, but it's increasing. I don't get I that. I think it's been increasing slowly over the course of many, many years, but recently the risk has been one in eight. I see. There are some women who are at a higher risk of developing breast cancer, mm -hmm. um, and those are women who have a family history of breast cancer, for example, in a first degree relative, and by mm -hmm. that I mean if their mother mm -hmm. or sister had mm -hmm. breast cancer, so those women are at a higher risk. The risk of breast cancer also increases as we get older. Okay. Um, and the risk of breast cancer, as we know, is much higher in women than it is in men. Okay. Men do get breast cancer occasionally, but that mm -hmm. accounts for less than 1% of the time. So it's very rare in men, so it's mostly in women. There's some other risk factors um, that are important to know about. So if women have ever had radiation therapy mm -hmm. for, um, for example, for Hodgkin's disease, okay. that places them at an increased risk of developing breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and women who've taken hormone replacement therapy are at increased risk. Mm -hmm. um, women who have um, started having their periods at a very young age, mm -hmm. and then those women who've gone through menopause at a late age 
okay. are at an increased risk. Uh -huh. um, and then women who have delayed childbearing, so who have children after the age of 30, that can increase the risk as well. So there are many, many risk factors. I guess so. So it's not all a matter of family history, whether it runs in your family. It's, it's not, and that's a very important point that you bring up. Okay. The majority of women who develop breast cancer do not have a family history of breast cancer. Okay, okay, so it's more your own personal uh, factors in a way that's that correct. contribute that's to this. That's correct. You know, when you had childbirth and, and all of that right. sort of thing. Right, right. Okay, um, now I remember they used to say that if you nursed your children, that that mm -hmm. was a protective uh, thing to do as far as breast cancer goes. Has that been disproven? Because I never see that anymore. Um, I personally have not heard of that. Okay, okay. Um, breastfeeding is beneficial for other reasons. Right, right. Um, But as far as having a protective uh, effect on the breast, I'm not aware okay. of that. Okay, okay, all right. So that may have been more of an old wives' tale. It's you possible. Know. Yeah, okay. So, um, all right, so there are lots of factors to um, take into account here, mm -hmm. and if the number has been increasing, it could be a result of the changes in our society when women have their children and all of that mm -hmm. as well. Right? It's probably a combination of genetic factors, environmental factors, how we live our lives. Right, right. So let's talk about environmental factors a little sure. bit. Do you, can you elaborate on that at all? in terms of uh, what's out there. You know, we hear about hormones in, um, you know, some of the foods we eat and some of the, what we take in has been modified either mm -hmm. through pesticides or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you know if that plays a role or are we still trying to figure that out? I, that's still to be determined. Okay, all right. So I don't know of any strong data that shows a clear link between those things and breast cancer. Okay, so, so we can't just go by diet. We don't know if diet affects it or not. Chosen. Not entirely sure. Okay, not sure. All right, so still, the jury's still out on that. It is. Okay. All right, so we're, essentially then any woman is at risk for this. That's correct. And it, did you say it increases as the woman gets older? It does. Okay. It does. So the risk of developing breast cancer does increase as we get older. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so now that we know that we're all essentially at risk for this disease, mm -hmm. so what do we do about it? We, there's no surefire way to avoid it probably That's to protect true. yourself. That's true. So the goal is really early detection. Okay. Um, and the, so the way to do that, so the American Cancer Society recommends that women starting at the age of 40 have a mammogram every year. Not every other year, not every three years, but actually every single year. Okay. We also recommend that a, wim a woman does a breast self-exam okay. once a month, which okay. is important. Mm -hmm. And then it's also important to have a clinical breast exam performed by a healthcare provider, either a physician, a physician's assistant, or nurse practitioner once a year. Okay. And that's for all women over the age of 40. Okay, all right. So even younger women, women shouldn't be doing the breast self-exam? I mean, it might be a good idea to start training yourself in a way. I actually think it is a good idea to start doing a breast self-exam for okay. young women before the age of 40, mm -hmm. just to get an idea sure. of how things feel so that way if there's ever a change, that woman will be able to potentially detect a change, meaning a lump in her breast that's new. Right, right. So it, that would be a good thing to get in the habit of doing. That's true. Okay. And I'm glad to hear that it's still being recommended because I think there was some confusion mm -hmm. about that a few years ago. We still recommend doing a self-exam. Okay. And the reason why, so our, our tests are very good. Mammography is excellent at detecting breast cancer mm -hmm. and it's been shown to decrease the, the um, mortality rate from breast cancer by up to 30%, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that no test is 100% perfect, and there are rare times when cancers are not visible on mammogram, and that might be because they're so small, or maybe they're being obscured by the, uh, by the rest of the breast tissue, mm -hmm. where they may only be detected as a palpable lump, meaning a woman feels a lump in her breast. So it's still important to do a breast self-exam and keep track of any changes, so any new lumps, any um, new areas of pain, any skin changes, any nipple discharge. If a woman has any of those symptoms, it's very important that she see her healthcare provider and not wait. Right, right. So it's not that you want to just keep tr like a log of these things. You want, if you have them, you want to 
get on the phone Correct. and make an appointment. Absolutely, and then have a clinical breast exam, and then okay. most likely that woman will come to see us in radiology for some imaging. Okay, all right. So, all right, so that's good to know. So it's good to be on top, do your own uh, screening at home, mm -hmm. see your doctor or a healthcare professional yes. once a year for their assessment, mm -hmm. but then also starting at age 40, have the mammogram. That's correct. Okay, so let's talk about mammograms. Sure. Up until this point, they've been, well, I think most recently they've been digital mammograms. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think before they were like x-rays, weren't they? Before they were analog, so okay. actually on, um, on film. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's all digital, basically. Right. Okay. Um, and all of the mammograms that we do at Lowell General Hospital and all of our sites are all digital. Okay, and that's more accurate? It, yes, it's, um, it's more accurate. The radiation dose can be lower. It helps us detect cancers better than analog. We okay. can see the breast tissue better. Okay, so are most people still having the regular digital mammogram? Is that the uh, sort of The standard, standard of care, care yes. is to have a digital mammogram okay. once a year, okay. starting at 40. Okay. All right, and that's the traditional go it's in with and the you compression, have the right compression um, right. that all women tell me about. Mm -hmm. um, so we we compress the breast. We get two pictures of each breast as part of a screening mammogram. Mm -hmm. The compression is important because it reduces the motion artifact on the um, on the images, so it makes it easier and, and um, better for us to be able to, de to detect cancer. Mm -hmm. So if there's any motion artifact on the images, it's very hard for us to see abnormalities in the breast. So that's one of the reasons why we do the compression. And the other reason is to reduce the radiation dose, to keep okay. the radiation dose nice and low. The more that we are able to compress the breast, the lower the radiation dose is. And we keep our radiation doses below a, a set guideline that's put together by the FDA. Okay, all right. So it's interesting though that you want the minimum, you, you don't want any motion. So it's almost like you don't want a blurry. It's like taking a blurry picture. Exactly, we right. don't want any blur. And we actually call it motion blur. Okay. That's the artifact. We want to avoid that. Okay. So, so we want the, the tissues to be nice and still. Okay, so mm -hmm. even though it's uncomfortable, it doesn't last too, too long. It doesn't last too long and it's a very important part of the mammogram. Okay, all right, and that's also probably where they tell you to hold your breath so you don't... That's correct, because yes. any breathing also mm -hmm. contributes to motion, which we want to avoid. Okay, all right, so that's your regular mammogram, mm -hmm. and uh, you get a good picture. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've had mammograms done before, mm -hmm. I guess I want to know sort of what happens after the mammogram. I know they always say either we'll call you or right. wait around for a little bit. So what happens to that mammogram after I leave? So after you leave our department, mm -hmm. um, that's when the radiologist gets involved. So we look at the mammogram images on special, special computer monitors that are very high resolution monitors. Mm -hmm. And we examine each image very carefully. Mm -hmm. And then we go back and we compare to as many prior mammograms as we can. Okay. I like to go back as many years as possible mm -hmm. to look for very subtle changes over time that might indicate an early cancer. Okay, so, so if you had four or five years worth of mammograms, you would look I, I go back all, to all of them. Okay, so yes. how long does that take? Um, just it takes a little bit of time, especially when you're comparing to multiple prior mm -hmm. studies. So it's you know probably about, it's not too long, five to 10 minutes okay. or so, okay. or, or, or less. It depends on what the breasts look like, mm -hmm. really, and how symmetric they look, and if there are any questionable changes. Okay, and are these all side by side? We look at them side by side. I actually have a big workstation with um, four big monitors to look at the current mammograms mm -hmm. and all of the prior mammograms okay. and, and look at them carefully. And then what happens, so if the mammogram is normal, mm -hmm. then the woman gets a notification letter saying your mammogram is normal, okay. we're glad to give you this good news, and we recommend that you come back in a year. Okay. Um, if there is an abnormality on the mammogram, sometimes we need to have women come back to our department to take some extra images. Mm -hmm. Now the majority of time when we do that, we're able to clear whatever the finding was and 
because sometimes it's due to overlapping breast tissue that can look like a density on a mammogram. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is special spot compression views to really press out the tissue in that one particular area of the breast, mm -hmm. just to make sure that there's no mass that's in that area. So most of the time when a woman comes back, she eventually will go back to her regular screening mammogram the following year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the process for that, that's why we always make sure we get your contact information, sure. your, the best telephone number to reach you so that we can call you to have you come back to our department to do extra images if they're needed. Okay. I just want to back up and sure. ask one thing about when you're looking at the different images. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of computer program or anything that does any kind of comparison or overlays like one year to another year or anything there, like that? There is. We actually use computer-aided detection, mm -hmm. which is a computer algorithm. It's kind of like having the mammogram read by two radiologists. Okay. So one of them being me or one of my colleagues right. and the other one being this computer algorithm that helps us detect detect things like masses or calcifications in the breast. Those are the two most common things that we're looking for on mammograms mm -hmm. that can be signs of breast cancer. Okay, what were they again, calcifications? Calcifications and, and masses. Masses, okay, mm -hmm. so those are what you're looking for. They're not the only ones, but those are the two most common. I see, okay. So, uh, and in any given day you're reading, you know, you're looking at how many different patients would you say? Um, it depends on the day. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually between 60 and 80 mm -hmm. a day. Um, and out of the mammograms that I read in any given day, typically I'll have about 5 to 10 percent of those women come back to the department for extra views. Okay, so that's not too many. Not too many. Okay, so we shouldn't get alarmed if you ask us to come back because you just really want to get a better picture most likely. Most of the time, yes, it can be. Um, it can definitely be scary for women mm -hmm. to be called back, especially if it's the first time that they've been called back for extra views. The majority of the time, we're not necessarily going to need to recommend a biopsy. Sometimes we do, but most of the time, we're able with those extra pictures to clear the area that was in question and have that woman go back to screening. Okay, all right. So that's pretty much what you do with digital mammograms. Now there's this new 3D, mm -hmm. which is also digital, of course. It is. Yes, it okay. Is. So now, how is that different from what we've just been talking about? Sure. So 3D mammography, um, which is also called tomosynthesis, mm -hmm. it's a very, it's a new, very exciting technology in breast imaging. Um, the way we get the images is very similar to having a regular mammogram, mm -hmm. and actually it's hard to even notice the difference when you're the woman having the mammogram done with tomosynthesis. Okay. So it's the same thing, we do the same compression, we do the same views, the only difference is that there's a rotating portion of the x-ray tube mm -hmm. that rotates over the breast and takes a very short exposure that adds about four seconds to each image. Okay. And then what that does is it takes multiple images through the breast that we're then able to reconstruct to get a three-dimensional picture of the breast. So that actually lets us, instead of looking at just a two-dimensional image, when we interpret a tomosynthesis, we're actually able to scroll through the breast. It's kind of like peeling back one layer at a time mm -hmm. so that you can look at the breast one layer and sort of pull back the tissue. And it helps us detect things that might otherwise be obscured mm -hmm. by tissue that might be above or below that point. So it's kind of like looking at pages of a book. Okay. Only it's the breast. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and you can go probably go back and forth just like you would a book. We go, yes. Yes, if exactly. you needed to. You well, can, what did that look like? Well, let me see it against this. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And so tomosynthesis can help us improve our detection of breast cancer. So it can help us find some cancers that are otherwise not visible on the regular mammogram images. And it can also help us reduce the number of times we need women to come back for the extra views. Because mm -hmm. we're always trying to keep our, that's called the recall rate, how often we have women come back to the department. We want to keep that low because we don't want to unnecessarily have women come back for extra pictures if they're not necessary. So with sure. tomosynthesis, we can bring our recall rates a little bit lower because mm -hmm. we're getting a better view of the breast tissue. Okay, but you still have to go through that compression even though you've got the arc thing taking all these pictures. For now, we still have to do the compression. 
um, it's possible maybe several years down the road mm -hmm. someone will come up with a way to do tomosynthesis imaging of the breast without as much compression. Right. But for now, we still need to compress the breast because motion sure. is still an issue with tomosynthesis images as well. Okay. So we're currently doing tomosynthesis at some of our sites. Mm -hmm. We're doing um, them at Lowell General Hospital Saints Campus okay. and then also at our site in North Andover. Uh -huh. So all women who are having screening mammograms at those sites are having the tomosynthesis as part of their mammogram. I think it's helpful for all women. Uh -huh. If I had to pick, sure. I think it's especially helpful for women that have dense breast tissue and that means that it, um, that basically refers to the amount of breast tissue that a woman has in relationship to fat in her breast. So okay. women who have a lot of breast tissue rather than fat, it makes it harder for us to look at the images and detect cancers. That's where tomosynthesis can be extremely helpful for us to pull back those layers of breast tissue to make sure there's not anything hiding in the breast. Um, it's also helpful for young women, and mm -hmm. those are the women who tend to have breast tissue that's more on the dense side. I see. It's almost like when you're younger, you have more muscle, perhaps, mm -hmm. and then it, it kind of relaxes a bit, if you will, as you get older. Perhaps. Yeah. Is it the same <laughs> concept or not necessarily? Um, not all women have uh, changes in their breast density as okay. they get older, but okay. as some women get older, the, t the breast tissue tends to be less dense. Okay. So it is more common to have very dense breast tissue when you're young. Okay. So then who makes the determination which one you should have? If you make your appointment at one of these centers, you'll automatically get the 3D imaging, That's correct? That's correct. So if a woman is interested in having 3D mammography, mm -hmm. when she calls to make her appointment, she mm -hmm. can just specify that she'd like to have the 3D mammography and then it can be booked at one of those two sites. She does not need a special order from okay. her physician uh -huh. or a special referral um, to have the test done. Um, she, if she is within, you know, greater than the age of 40 and due for a yearly mammogram and she would like tomosynthesis, then she could absolutely request that. Okay. And your insurance company, I know you're probably not an insurance expert. I am not. <laughs> yeah. But uh, theoretically, the insurance company should pay for the tomosynthesis as well because it's a screening mammogram. There's actually no extra charge okay. for the tomosynthesis. So right, right now, it's the same as having a regular mammogram. Okay. So there is no extra charge to the insurance company for the tomosynthesis. Okay. Well, that's nice that the patient can actually make the decision mm -hmm. whether or not she wants to have this particular um, technology used. Mm -hmm. it, you don't have to wait for the doctor's referral for that. That's correct. Okay, so do you have a line, you know, are most people lining up to, for um, this? We are seeing more and more women who are specifically coming into one of those two sites sure. for tomosynthesis. Um, we hope at some point in the future that we'll, ha we'll be able to offer it at more of our sites, but we're very happy that we have it at two of them. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's a very new technology and not mm -hmm. too many hospitals outside of the major academic centers have the technology. Okay. Um, so we're very lucky to be one of the few hospitals, community hospitals in the right. area to have this and be able to offer it to our patients. Right, okay. And now, do you ever use it in conjunction with regular mammogram? If something comes up on the regular mammogram, a digital mammogram, mm -hmm. shall, shall we say, do you ever follow up with the tomosynthesis? We do. Actually, whenever a woman has the 3D mammogram, she also will have the 2D mammogram at the same time. Oh. We do them both at the same time. Okay. And then sometimes if we need to get extra pictures of the breasts, sometimes we also do tomosynthesis if we need to. Okay. All right, just to get a clearer picture. Correct. All right, okay. Now, in addition to these uh, ways of having your breast mm -hmm. imaged, what about things like ultrasound and MRIs? Are those used at all? So, yes. So, we use breast ultrasound for um, women who are younger than the age of 30. If they okay. present with a lump, mm -hmm. we start with ultrasound. Okay. Um, because at that point, we'd like to avoid the radiation exposure for those young women. Uh -huh. And it's also very hard to see anything in the breasts at that point, because the breasts are usually very, very, very dense. I see, okay. So we do ultrasound for that. We also use ultrasound a lot of the time in conjunction with mammography to evaluate things that we might see on the mammogram. So if we, for example, see 
a mass on a mammogram, then the next step is to do a targeted ultrasound of that part of the breast to try to see if we can see the mass on ultrasound. And that's to determine if it's a cyst, mm -hmm. and cysts tend to be benign and not cancer, versus a solid mass, which would, in general, need to be addressed further with a, a biopsy. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of the time we do use ultrasound in addition to mammography and a lot of the time it's when patients come back for those extra views. Okay. It's also if a woman comes in with a palpable lump or if she has pain in a certain area of her breast or nipple discharge, commonly we'll do an ultrasound in addition to a mammogram. Okay. We also offer breast MRI, so that's one of our um, imaging methods to look at the breasts. Breast MRI, we use it for a variety of reasons. Um, some patients have breast MRIs for screening in addition mm -hmm. to having their yearly mammogram. And that's for women who are at a much higher risk of developing breast cancer over their lifetime. And usually those are women who have either had a personal history of breast cancer, or they might have a very strong family history of breast cancer, or they may have had a prior needle biopsy that showed some atypical cells mm -hmm. that places them at a higher risk of developing breast cancer, or they may have had radiation therapy for Hodgkin's disease. So there are some women who get screening breast MRIs every year in addition to mammogram. We also use MRIs as a problem solving tool. So if we see something on a mammogram like a density and then we do an ultrasound and we don't see anything but we still see a mammographic abnormality, sometimes we'll do an MRI to try to see if there's anything hiding in that part of the breast. So, okay, so there are a lot of tools there. Are a there lot of options. Available. So, now I know that the 3D mammography is clearer, the picture you get is clearer mm -hmm. than with the digital mm -hmm. 2D uh, mammography. Are the other techniques, we've just talked about the ultrasound, the MRI, mm -hmm. do they produce as clear a picture or a clearer picture, or does it just give you different information? It gives us different information, so they're okay. really complementary to mm -hmm. mammogram. I see, okay. Are there any other tools you use? I've, I've <laughs> um, there are. So we do. Okay. So we we do a lot of image guided biopsies in our All department right. in radiology, and that's done either by myself or one of my colleagues in breast imaging. Mm -hmm. So we do ultrasound guided breast biopsies. We do stereotactic breast biopsies, and those are for um, most commonly for calcifications because okay. we see them best on mammograms, so we use mammogram pictures to be able to do the biopsy. Mm -hmm. And then we also do MRI-guided biopsies on occasion. Okay, so there's a lot of tools there to really help women yes. get early detection uh, and feel comfortable about where they stand. Yes. Yes, there okay. Are. So what would you say are the things that we, that we should be taking away here? What, what are the, okay. you know, what's the message you want to get across sure. to women who are watching? So um, I definitely recommend having a mammogram okay. every year starting at the age of 40. Okay. That's very important. And I just didn't ask this one last yes. question. If I'm 88, 90 yes. years old, I still go and have one? At that point, it's really up to the woman okay. in discussion with her physician. Okay. Um, it, it, it depends on how that woman is feeling mm -hmm. and what her overall health is. Okay. Um, I know personally my grandmother who just turned 90, she decided she made a personal decision that she doesn't want to have mammograms anymore, which is fine. Okay. But it really depends on um, the, each individual Case. woman. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry, I got you uh, sad track there. Okay. I was asking that's for your okay. last thoughts. Okay, so your mammogram, last mammograms okay. every year starting at, at the okay. age of 40. All right. Okay. Breast self exam once a month. Okay. Clinical breast exam every year. Those things are very important. Tomosynthesis is a great new technology mm -hmm. um, that I think is going to be standard of care probably within the next decade. Okay. It's not quite there yet. It's still a new technology, but it really helps us look at the breast tissue um, even better than mammogram, and so I think it's a great tool that we can now use. Okay, so why don't I, we just leave it there. Okay. That's a great note to end on, and we might as well take advantage of this technology since it's so close and so cutting edge. So. It is. Okay. It is. Well, I want to thank you for coming thank in, you. Dr. Steinkeller. Thank you for having me. We, I learned great. a lot, and I'm sure my audience 
students did as well. Great. So, and I want to thank you again for joining us one more time, and we'll see you next time.